greetings agents. While not obvious at all, all anomalies pose a potential threat to humanity. Since we cannot fully comprehend their properties, and given we know that many of them have hidden agendas, it is worth taking extreme precautions with each and every one of them, eliminating them if necessary. The anomaly we will explore today will show what can happen when the SCP Foundation wrongly believes they know what they are dealing with. Item number SCP-1581 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1581 is to be contained within a standard 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter cell inside. No further actions are necessary unless experiments are being conducted. SCP-1581-1 is to be contained in a standard human containment unit. Because of continued cooperation with the Foundation, SCP-1581-1 is allowed to tour the site if accompanied by security personnel and any appropriate requests may be reviewed and granted. No contact is permitted with any personnel actively involved with any other SCP object. Otherwise, anyone with level 1 clearance or higher is allowed to engage SCP-1581-1 in casual conversation or arrange visits in the containment unit. Following Incident 1581-001, SCP-1581-1 is to be confined in the containment unit at all times, and no personnel is allowed to enter the unit without level 4 authorization and supervision. This restriction can be ignored by security personnel for interventions in case of an emergency. The toilet that SCP-1581-1 uses must be designed and fitted with a device that automatically seals the mother SCP-1581-1 defecates into plastic containers before disposal. Description SCP-1581 is a cohesive lump of semi-digested carrot pulp and mashed carrots, approximately 2.4 meters in diameter. It is roughly spherical and contains traces of other food components, as well as digestive enzymes gut flora, and feces. When separating matter from SCP-1581 through any means, the largest remaining part regains its original mass and size, while any separated material becomes non-anomalous. However, SCP-1581 can be relocated if moved as a whole. SCP-1581 is a spatial anomaly. Objects inserted from any direction enter an extradimensional space filled with more of the same substance SCP-1581 is composed of, apparently found within an anomalously large gastrointestinal tract. Objects may also exit this extradimensional space the same way, by moving or being moved into a straight line through the position occupied by SCP-1581 inside the tract. GPS devices placed within SCP-1581 always indicate their locations as SCP-1581-1. SCP-1581-1 is a human male, age 44, believed to somehow contain SCP-1581 as well as the extradimensional space it leads to. SCP-1581's intestines are completely filled with carrot pulp, and defecating results in the same substance. Despite this, SCP-1581-1 experiences no adverse health effects that this condition would normally create and needs to consume food just as any regular human. Consume food does not appear to enter SCP-1581-1's gastrointestinal tract, and any object inserted into SCP-1581 does not actually appear inside SCP-1581-1. Exploration of the space within SCP-1581 is difficult due to the mashed carrot substance that appears to fill it completely. Human exploration is possible, but difficult and impractical. Endoscopic examination with modified left endoscopes has proved to be the most versatile. This way, the area in the vicinity of SCP-1581 can be mapped by inserting an endoscope until an intestinal wall is hit, and then continuing along the wall. Through this method, it has been found that the carrot pulp immediately around SCP-1581 is contained within an intestine approximately 5 meters in diameter and moving downstream at a rate of about 12 millimeters per day. Of note is the fact that about 15 meters downstream, 
a junction has been discovered in the gastrointestinal tract, where the intestine cave splits into two smaller ones. The significance of this is unknown, and SCP-1581-1's intestinal tract itself does not present any such anomalous anatomical features. Endoscopic examination of SCP-1581-1 has shown that his duodenum and anus both lead to a similar extradimensional space as SCP-1581. Recovery Notes SCP-1581-1 was brought to the Foundation's attention on 20 through a phone call placed by his son from their home in to a local doctor. Describing SCP-1581-1's condition that the son reported has been going on for two days prior to the call. At the time of containment, SCP-1581-1 was catalogued as anomalous item in lack of apparent need for containment procedures. SCP-1581-1 is unable to recall the exact moment of onset of his condition or any anomalous event that would have caused it and has stated that he strongly dislikes the consumption of carrot-based foods. SCP-1581 was discovered after the material extracted from SCP-1581-1 was gradually collected into a large waste container following testing. When attempting to dispose of the contents, the anomalous nature of SCP-1581 was immediately noted. It is believed that material from SCP-1581-1 reached a critical mass that somehow resulted in the creation of SCP-1581. Experiments to attempt to create additional instances are not permitted at this time. Medical Intervention Report 319-1581 On May 20 at hours, bowel obstruction surgery was performed on SCP-1581-1 in an attempt to remove the matter filling his gastrointestinal tract. Surgery performed as usual, intestinal wall breached, and a total of 11.7 kilograms of carrot pulp was removed. No anatomical abnormality is noted. SCP-1581-1 recovered in the next hours. Post-surgery examination revealed the absence of carrot pulp in SCP-1581-1's intestines, and endoscopic examination revealed no further anomalous properties. Surgery declared success. SCP-1581-1 placed in containment for observation following medical recovery. Of note that, at this time, GPS devices inserted onto SCP-1581 still showed their location as SCP-1581-1. Incident 1581-001 On July 20 44 hours after medical intervention 319-1581, research assistant Peters performed a casual visit of SCP-1581-1's unit. This was not considered unusual, and therefore, their discussion was not recorded. The surveillance video logs of SCP-1581-1's unit during this event can be accessed at Analysis of video logs shows no anomalous behavior beyond casual conversation. 12 minutes and 21 seconds after the conclusion of the visit, research assistant Peters gained access to SCP-1581's containment cell and immediately proceeded to consume material from it. Due to the low security priority of scp 1581 cell, research assistant Peters was able to continue this activity for 2 minutes and 10 seconds before being forcefully removed by security personnel. Following the incident, Research Assistant Peters was unable to account for or explain his previous actions. Immediate medical examination revealed that no carrot pulp was present in Research Assistant Peters' gastrointestinal tract. Subsequent examination of SCP-1581-1 showed that his intestines once again contained carrot pulp and that the previous anomalous conditions have returned. SCP-1581-1 placed in isolation. Interview 1581-August 20 Interview between SCP-1581-1 and Dr. Steele concerning the events of Incident 1581-001. The interview was performed on August 20, 12 hours following the incident. 
Begin recording. SCP-1581-1, I would like to ask you some questions regarding yesterday. Please state your name for the record. Go on, doctor. Do you recall your last conversation with research assistant Peters? Yes, I believe I do. What exactly did you talk about? You know, just the usual. News from the outside world, sports, the such. It's good to break the isolation from time to time. Oh, and we talked about me a bit, too. He never really mentioned it before, but it's not surprised that he eventually did. I do have this terrible condition, and among friends, it comes up sooner or later. Are you aware that your condition was cured following the surgery? Cured? Gosh, no. You removed the substance, but the essence, that was still there. And now it's back, as you can see. So it seems. But why did you convince research assistant Peters to restore you to your current condition? Restore? Don't be silly, doctor. How on earth would he even do such a thing? Are you not aware of research assistant Peters' actions following your discussion with him? No, I'm not. I assume he's a very busy man, lab coat and all. I don't ask him about his work. I know he can tell me. Ten minutes after leaving your containment unit, Research Assistant Peters gained access to SCP-1581 and ate from it. Ew. Oh. Wow. I mean, it's carrots. Is he fine? He's alright from the time being. So, are you saying you had nothing to do with what he did? What? You're thinking I hypnotized him or something? No, sir. It's not like I didn't know how to do that. We just told this all. Hey, if he's feeling better, could I see him later? I really want to be sure that he's fine. Interview concluded. End of recording. Fifteen minutes after the interview, Dr. Steele was apprehended by security, trying to gain access to the containment chamber of SCP-1581. End law. Once again, the Foundation loses control of an anomaly by underestimating its capabilities. It is unfortunate that an innocent civilian is the carrier of an anomalous entity, but allowing the continued existence of interdimensional objects poses an extremely great risk to normalcy. To make matters worse, the failed attempt to remove anomaly 1581-1 demonstrates that it is capable of acting on its own, with unknown motives. Allowing something like this to continue to exist, and potentially contaminate more people, is an unacceptable risk. Help us to stop paranormal threats and defend the fivefold goal with your suggestions and comments below. I am Viros Anonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.